Hey guys, it's Delora Dabbles here and I have finished and blocked my sweater. It is, oh my gosh, I just, I love this lace paneling and it's also on the pouch, the little kangaroo pouch here on the sweater. I love the subtle details that you can get whenever you knit your own stuff and a lot of these patterns have those nice subtle classy details on them. This was my first time knitting a sweater with set in sleeves and I have to say it was a lot of work but I think I definitely like the fit of set in sleeves much better than raglan sleeves. Both of the sweaters I have knit before have been raglan sleeve sweaters. One is the rondeur pattern and one is the five dollars in Paris pattern. They are both uh, free patterns on Ravelry and this fits so much better. It's so nice. So it was worth all of the effort and the learning curve in this case since it was my first time. I just really really like a good hoodie. Now this is not, the design elements were a plus but it's not what sold me on the sweater on, on the pattern because this is not a free pattern. This is the snuggler and I had to pay for it. So I'm very picky about the patterns that I decide to pay for. They have to be something that I can't find anywhere else. And this is definitely that. It's a very snug hoodie, hence the name I suppose. Snuggler. My hair is everywhere. I've also been rubbing my face on my cat, so maybe that's my fault. Um, yeah, this is the hood. It's really cute. Not because it makes me look like a Vuggeridge Ridge Cornholio, but because when I'm on my bicycle and I'm wearing my store-bought hoodie, the hoodie flies off really badly all the time. I basically don't even have the the hoodie while I'm riding the bike like I the, the hood comes off but also whenever I'm on my bicycle and I turn on a regular hoodie this is really gappy I'm basically just looking back into my hood and I cannot see the traffic behind me which I need to be able to see that so this hoodie I can turn and look and let me just show you guys like it's not gapping here where my eyeball is and I can move my head all kinds of funny ways and it's not coming off. So this is the perfect sweater for cycling um, in the winter. And I don't need a scarf with this because it goes all the way up. This is quite warm actually, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of hot in here. So <laughs> it's 80 degrees. Um, outside so it's a little hot so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now before I show you everything else that I've done this week all right this tank top is much more weather appropriate <laughs> um, let me turn this right side out yeah and I just I love hand knitted garments so much because you know usually with machine knit things or like hoodies that you buy at the store. If it's knitted fabric, it's usually a very fine weight of knitted fabric and it's machined. So there's something about the thicker yarn that you use when you hand knit something and the kind of stretch that you get out of it. Like it's so nice, but also like I can put this up to the light and I can see the sunlight coming in through the stitch, like like through the stitches, but it's still so unbelievably warm, but it breathes pretty nicely too. Anyway, I just really, really like hand knit stuff. I love to fold my hand knit stuff. It's just so like foldable. Anyway, um, I really like the tailored feel of a good hand knit sweater because I also feel like if I want the sweater to go down lower, I can put in, you know, hip increases so that it'll go lower without losing that form-fitting feel. And you can, it's probably the same reason why people love to sew their own stuff. It's just, you can really tailor it to you. And I love that in a good sweater. So moving on, I needed some instant gratification <laughs> uh, projects after that very long 
sweater project. That's all I knitted. I was doing a lot of spinning, so that took me a little over a month, but I was also doing a lot of spinning in my free time, too. It's still the quickest I've ever finished a sweater is a little over a month. That's, that's like, the quickest. So... Um, I was rummaging through my yarn stash and I found this hat that I never finished because I was getting to the point where I had decreased so many times on the crown that I needed to switch to DPNs. I did not feel like messing around with double pointed needles so I put it in the box and never finished it. So I finished it. This is going to be my winter beanie now. Like I just love this. It is so like... I mean, I just, I just love this. Um, so nice. So I finished this hat that I had started forever ago. Then I started and finished this one. Now, this one is a bit more snug. It's a different gauge, of course, because the yarn is larger. But it's super pretty. Oh, my gosh. So this, these are both hand-spun yarns that I did myself. Um... This was my shot at a self-striping uh, hand spun. I did it using roll lags, so I blended roll lags, and I blended them blue and then this like purpley, pinkish, yellow, and that was the whole roll lag. And I just spun the roll lags end to end, so I would spin blue to yellow, yellow to blue, blue to yellow, yellow to blue, and so on. So my stripes are not completely consistent. I started the crown decreases around here but as you can see this stripe this stripe that stripe they're all slightly different sizes I wasn't exactly precise and I don't think there really is a way to be like exactly precise with your roll lags when you're doing this but it is it is self-striping I did succeed now um the colors were chosen to look like um, a Houston sunset because the sunsets here are like absolutely amazing just and it's it's the chemicals in the air like not gonna lie Houston is polluted but the pollution makes such pretty sunsets don't they <laughs> so um, yeah that's why like there's sparkles in it but there's only sparkles across the blue because I wanted the sparkles on the blue to look like stars in the night sky and then this would just be you know the sky I put silk in this because I was hoping that the silk would make it look cloudy perhaps like clouds so I used silk to try to imitate the texture of clouds and I use sparkle to imitate stars that's not exactly the silk didn't really work out the sparkle really really worked out but the silk did not make it the texture look like clouds um, this was a very ambitious design uh, project but I really do like how it turned out. Like, just the creativity that went into it. This was one of my early dye jobs and one of my early blending, like Rolag blending jobs as well. And so, of course, this is Navajo plied, so it's a three ply. But I was very happy with uh, just how it turned out. Like, they're just not my color, so I don't see myself wearing this beanie. Maybe someone else will see it and love it and want it, but um, not necessarily my colors. This is definitely um, more my style of beanie here. So after I did these instant gratification projects, I finished this hat and I made this one. I needed to jump right back into another complicated project. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was uh, I started a sock. I actually started two projects, so I'm doing a sock, and I'm doing a tank top. We'll talk about the tank top in a minute. So this is the Narcissa Socks pattern from the unofficial Harry Potter Knits magazine. I love this magazine. There are a lot of projects in here that I want to spin for. Uh, not just because I love going through the process of taking raw wool into hat, like I did with this, or raw wool into 
sock in this case. I want to do raw wool into sweater now. Like that's the next step for me. Um, it's a very um, ambitious project. That's a lot of yarn to spin. So, but I'm going to do it anyway. I did knit the Narcissa socks years back. I knit them in the Knit Picks Chroma. And within a matter of only a few years, they felted to hell. I can barely get my foot in them. Whenever I hand knit a pair of socks, I expect those socks to last forever. I will darn those socks if they get holes in them. Those are forever socks. The time commitment that goes into making a pair of hand knit socks um, is the kind of effort you want to reap the benefit of over the course of your freaking life. You know, so I was very disappointed. But of course, this was before I started spinning, really. This was before I, I knew what I was doing as far as how my yarn would affect my finished project. So I wasn't really thinking about that. Knowing what I know now, of course, the Nitpicks Chroma is a singles yarn. Yes, it's superwash wool, but it's not plied at all. At all. It's a singles. So it felted to hell despite the fact that it was superwash. Um, I will never be making a pair of socks out of Knit Picks Chroma again. I will probably never buy Knit Picks Chroma again. I really find that Knit Picks yarn is a subpar. It is very subpar. This sweater, I really, really like this sweater. But the whole time I was knitting it, as I was going through and the yarn was coming through, I was picking out guard hairs uh, from this yarn because this is the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. It's cheap. It's affordable. I was able to buy 13 skeins of this back in community college, a sweater quantity of yarn for a good price. But... This might not be a sweater that I wear, like, next to my skin all the time. Like, my arms are pretty, like, not very sensitive, but especially here and on my tummy. Like, that skin is a little bit more sensitive, and this sweater sometimes feels a little itchy against my skin. So, we'll be wearing a tank top under this, which, you know, I guess you should anyway, but... I'm lazy. It doesn't really get that cold here that you need to double up on clothing, but... Anyway, so yeah, not really much of a fan of Knitpix yarn anymore. And the more I make my own yarn, the more critical I am of all store-bought store -bought yarns. Like, I'm just a very critical yarn connoisseur now. And I'm very critical of my own yarns. That's not to say that I think my yarn is the only yarn that, 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 that counts, that I make the best yarn ever. No, I'm very critical of my own yarn too because making the yarn is as much of an art as what you turn that yarn into so anyway I am making the Narcissa socks again because I'm tired of not having a pair because they're just so pretty like this stitch pattern is just so gorgeous like oh my gosh so gorgeous. I just, I just love it. I'm going to make myself a pair of the Herbology socks next with that uh, green BFL that I did and it'll be perfect. And you, so, um, I will talk briefly about the Lestrange cloak because I am still spinning for that. Like I still plan on spinning for that. Let me, let me correct myself. Um, so this was my test swatch. I got perfect gauge on it, as I said last time, and that never happened. So that's like, this is meant to be. I've decided that I don't want it to be these colors. I don't want it to be this very light lilac and this very light gray, although not a lot of the gray seeped into this swatch. I've got a very slow gradient going on purpose because this is going to be very long rows, so I don't want it to look stripy. I don't want it to look variegated. So I want my color pattern repeats to be very long color pattern repeats. That's why this whole gauge swatch is purple, and you don't get to see any of the gray yet. Um, anyway, literally every thought in the design process of the yarn comes back to what I am making 
with that yarn so that it all kind of comes together into one project. I'm not just making a bunch of fingering weight yarn and then making a sweater. I am making the sweater even while I'm making the yarn for the sweater. Everything is kept in mind. The end goal is always kept in mind. Um, if you want help with that, the yarn Yarnitecture book is amazing. But anyway, because this is a lace cloak, it's basically like a, a, a duster, and I want mine to be very long, so I'm going to spend some, some extra yarn to make sure that I have all that I need. So you can't really see the stitch definition on the magazine, but if you go to Ravelry Projects, you can see the stitch definition a little bit better in that picture, but the photography in this part of the magazine is so dark. Ugh. Ah criticisms on photography when I'm not a photographer let me shut up but <laughs> um, yeah I decided that I want different colors because I am not this flamboyant a person when it comes to colors I mean I just talked about how this beanie I very much enjoyed spinning for it was a great uh, process but these are not my colors these are more my colors so it's one of those things that I want to make sure that this is something that I'm going to wear a lot and something that I feel comfortable wearing with clothing items that I already have, right? So I wear a lot of black already, so darker tones would be better. So I want to go for a more saturated lilac. I want to go for a much darker gray. I'm probably going to have to buy um, two more bottles of my gray acid dye. Uh, it is the silver gray color in this required acid dye. And I also, in this project, I really loved how combining turquoise with periwinkle gave me a very rich blue that I don't really have a name for. I'm not a color expert. I just know what I like when I see it and when I accidentally stumble across it. And definitely this, this dye job here that I did for, for these socks, um... I definitely found that turquoise and periwinkle is such a beautiful rich blue and I want that beautiful rich blue in here. I also want to do a splash of a deep rich green so maybe mix some Kelly green with some some gray maybe a touch of the black. Now anytime I mix black acid dye with another color <clears throat> I blend them hot, obviously, but I let them cool completely down to room temperature so that the dye really does become one homogenized mixture so that the dyes don't break later when I put them into the wool because whenever you break black dye, you get all kinds of weird browns and reds, and that's not what I'm going for in this color scheme at all. I want a very dark lilac not purple because the purple color in the jacquard acid dye is I'm not a fan of it I'm really not a fan of it but a darker lilac a darker periwinkle turquoise a darker gray and a darker green and I think that those are the perfect colors to my style so yes that is the plan <laughs> that is what we're doing um, now it's still Paulworth and it's still going to be spun at the same weight. So this gauge swatch still holds true. I'm just changing the way that I'm dyeing the wool. The colors, not the way that I'm dyeing it, but the colors that I am dyeing the wool. So that it is perfect. And that it is going to be something that I'm going to wear and love a lot. Not just something I'm going to wear when I feel like wearing purple. <laughs> anyway, I, oh, Almost, I almost forgot to show you guys this. This is the tank top that I am currently working on. This yarn has gold sparkle in it. It is a linen blend by Blue Heron Yarns. I got this all the way back in high school. There we go. You can start to see the sparkle now. It's very sparkly to the eye, but my camera, probably because I'm not in direct sunlight, it's not wanting to show all of the sparkle. But um, yeah, these colors are absolutely amazing. I'm obsessed with this. It's like I continue knitting it just to see like the fabric color come to life. 
I love that even though this is a variegated yarn, I'm knitting a project with very long rows, so it's not pooling all nasty and gross. Um, it still looks quite nice. So I hate it whenever I get a variegated yarn and I don't even buy variegated yarn anymore because I don't like that pooling. That's why whenever I spun for this, I Navajo plied it and I just made sure that I didn't get too much pooling of color in one area as I was knitting it too because I just do not like variegated yarns once they're knit up. They look beautiful as yarn. Uh, that's not a look I like. <laughs> it looks a bit like camo and I just not. That's not my style. So maybe let me take this hat off. I look a little silly wearing a, a wool beanie in April. So uh, with that, I will let you guys go. I hope that you guys enjoyed my rambling and my projects and what I'm up to. I would love to see what you're up to. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I am at Delora Dabbles. So we can keep track of what everyone else is doing. If you have a YouTube channel that is like this, you know, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll follow you back and we will make a nice solid little community together. Of people that like to knit and spin or just spin or just knit or crochet. I forget sometimes that I crochet. <laughs> Until next time, happy dabbling and bye-bye.